the spring of 1981, an amateur paleontologist from Italy discovered what he thought was a prehistoric species of bird. It was only a baby and had died 113 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous period. It died in a lake, one with very little oxygen. This led to it being preserved with things that are almost always lost during the process of fossilization, organs. As a nickname, he called the creature Cagnolino, and worked to prepare it himself before handing it off to a proper paleontologist. It was then prepared to scientific standards, revealing the aforementioned organs. The heart, maybe, the liver, maybe, trachea, spleen, maybe, intestines, etc. Because the animal was a baby, it couldn't be assigned to a family, but it was obviously a dinosaur. It was given the name Scipionics in 1981, with the name meaning Scipio's claw. The scientists guessed that it was a Sciolorosaur, the group that contains Tyrannosaurs, Raptors, Therizinosaurs, and Comsognathids like Sinoceropteryx. Recently, in 2011, a study indicated that Scipionix was an early member of the Comsognathids, making it more closely related to Tyrannosaurids than it is to Dromaeosaurs. Side note, Scipionix was not its only name. Other names that were suggested include Dromaeodaemon, Italosaurus, Italoraptor, and even Microraptor, a name that would be used only a few years later on a creature much more popular than Scipionix. And for the Super Paleo nerds, the holotype, the first fossil of a species, is technically named SBA-SA163760. Now, before we talk about the actual anatomy of Scipionix, it's important to state that the anatomy of dinosaurs will vary. This is just one theropod, and it is unknown how much of its anatomy applies to other dinosaurs. Additionally, to fill in the blanks, I'm going to use modern bird anatomy, because those are the closest analogs to theropods. Okay? Good. Starting at the head, there are no organs, no eyes, no brain, no tongue. The first organ you encounter is the trachea, and then the esophagus. The trachea is cut short, but filling in the gaps, the lungs would be around here. On the other hand, the digestive system goes all the way through. Interpreting with bird anatomy, we can connect the esophagus to a possible crop at the base of the neck, and then up to the stomach. Based on the position of the tiny bones from prey animals still in the stomach, we can assume that the stomach had a gizzard as well, just like modern birds. Then, the stomach connects to the intestines, which loop around and disappear into the slab. We can follow them later in the tract up along the spine, up until we reach the pelvis. The intestines then descend between the pubis and the ischium, leading to the rectum, where you can still find traces of its feces it's still inside the cavity. There is a large red splotch in the upper thorax, which indicates that it was once a blood-filled organ, most likely the liver, with bits of heart and spleen mixed in. Based on the placement so far, the heart and spleen go here. Filling in the gaps left with bird anatomy once again, the kidneys would probably go here, above the intestines and any sort of reproductive organ, giving us the final product, the rough, possible internal anatomy of a theropod dinosaur. There's probably a lot more that is missing in the fossil that is present in actual theropods like air sacs. But for the most part, I think that this diagram is accurate to the vital organs of Scipionics. I'll be uploading the diagram for you to download if you'd like, or maybe you can improve upon it by drawing actual organs rather than basic silhouettes. With any luck, you might have learned something new from this video. I did, at least. I might make a follow-up looking at anatomy from other kinds of dinosaurs, but until then, Thanks for watching.